Hi, I'm Allie. Join me as I show you how to do this Chaton King component into a necklace, a bracelet, earrings, whatever you want to make. This is an amazing design by Chris Lewis King, one of our community members, that she's so happy to share with you guys. If you need any materials, go ahead and look below the video in the description, and we'll post links back to our website for it. Gather up your materials, and let's get started. So to begin this beautiful piece, we are going to be using an 8 millimeter chaton along with some 2 millimeters, 15 O's, 11 O's, and then our base is going to be our iris duos. I have a size 12 needle on here with size 6 dragon thread in the smoke color, and I'm at the bottom of about 4 feet of thread, and I have on 6 of my iris duos through the top when the rounded section is facing up with a 11 O seed bead after each. I'm going to tie this into a loop and we're going to learn how to do our component. We're also going to learn how to restart our component if we decide that we want to do it in a row to combine for a necklace or a bracelet. If you want to do an earring or to start out your first one, you're going to tie this into a knot, sew through that first and second iris duo along with the 11 in the middle. And now we're going to do a series of beads to get ready for our chaton of a 15, 11, 15, and then sew into that same first hole or the inner hole of the iris duo. These are gonna sit a little bit awkward there in the middle of those two beads. Don't worry about that. You just wanna make sure the thread is not twisted. It's okay if your beads are sitting to the side. In between each of those iris duos that it just kind of sits like that to the side, again, is a 15, an 11, and a 15, and then into the next iris duo. So at this point, you should have nothing going through that second hole of your iris duo bead. So in goes 15, 11, 15, into your next iris duo. And as you're working your way around then, we actually get to the iris duo becoming the bezel for our chaton very, very quickly. And this design is a beautiful design by Chris Lewis King, one of our community members. And I love seeing the different creative ways that our community members take our exclusive beads like the Iris Duos and kind of create with them. From here then, after adding in your last one, we are going to step up through the first 15 and out also through the 11. We're going to bring those 11s towards the front of our component and we're going to connect all of the 11s here between that 15 and 11, 15 with another 15, 11, 15. So over then to the next 11 O from that group of three and make sure that new grouping of three beads sits to the top. Once again, 15, 11, 15, over to that set, making sure that it's not twisted and that your seed beads are gonna sit correctly with one to the right and one to the left through that middle 11 0, ignoring the 15s, and that brings it into almost a basket shape, which we're gonna use again to hold on and to connect to our chaton. So around and around we go, adding in those extra little seed beads with 15s with the 11, catching into the next of our 11 OC beads that we just added. So see how we're kind of creating that little basket effect going around, adding that in. You're going to do this six times since you have six sets of it, turning that going through that middle 11. And then we're going to get ready to add our chaton in the middle. So I need a couple more here. 15, 11, searching my map for another 15. And then we're coming back through that first start 11. As we come back through that, I'm also going to sew back through my first 15, 11, 15. Bring the needle out. Get my chaton ready. Stick it in the middle there and do a tight little pull. I'm then going to sew through and not get stuck on my flyers here on the side. My 11, my next 11, the first 15, and the 11 on that grouping of three that we just added. Our next go round to hold this chaton in place 
is going to be two of our 15 OC beads that are gonna edge up along the side and connect. Now coming out through the 11 OC bead that sits uh, perfectly with the Iris Duo, we are going to add one and two of our 15 O's. You're gonna skip over the next 11 O and go to that second 11 O, which is also the next one right in front of the Iris Duo. You'll notice that I'm pushing down the chaton with my fingers because this is really where that bezel stays in place. Two 15s go on, skip over the next one, and go into the next 11 that's right in front of the Iris Duo. Push that down and make sure that goes towards the center of the design there. Again, one and two over to the one right near the Iris Duo. So you're going the whole way around and this is going to be six times because you have six of your Iris Duos that you're catching on to. And then after this, we're going to reinforce this. What that means is we are gonna take our thread and needle, not adding any extra beads, and we are going to sew back through that center row. So the center row of the gold, what we're doing right now, we're going to retrace our thread through as well one more entire time. Going through the 11s also that we're connecting onto. When you get back to the beginning, you're going right through that 11, and then right away, weaving through the 11s and the 15s. Using your finger, you can see here I'm pushing down on that chaton and just pulling into place. And there you have it. So I'm going to go around here reinforcing those extra seed beads that go in line here. And after doing so, we are going to get to the outer edge of our iris duos in order to add our seed beads and our crystals along the side. After weaving around, you are taking your thread and needle down along the thread path into that first hole of the iris duos. So I just went back through the 15s along the side after one of the 11s, and now I'm going to reverse the thread. Taking the thread from the inner hole of the iris duo to the exterior hole of the iris duo. From here, we are going to decorate the sides. So we are going to decorate with a 15, a crystal, and a 15, and then we're gonna go into the next iris duo. This is just gonna add a crystal to the interior, and you're going to repeat this six times going around the circle. After this portion here, we're gonna add some seed beads going around the top of the iris duo that will connect and add that bling. One thing to take note of as you're doing this is you can pretty much stop at any point. So if you don't want all of the seed beads around the exterior, you can stop at this. This is very much a component piece that we are going to make into um, a continuous piece, which is gonna change the way that we actually start this section here with our Iris Duo in the middle. So we'll go over that. So if you want to have two earrings, once we get the next seed beads on, you are pretty much finished or you can continue on and connect and start another one. After going through here, I'm gonna sew through my crystal here and out along the first one. Anytime you're doing something that's repetitive going around in a circle, I always like to go back through and past the first one because what that does is that pulls it a little bit tighter and finishes off the design. So see how pretty that is just as is without adding the seed beads. Let's go ahead though and add the seed beads. So I've gone ahead and done four of my peaks here. It's repetitive. You're coming out of your 15-0 from your crystal here, and you're gonna add seven seed beads onto your needle and thread, and then sew through the next grouping of 15 crystal 15. That puts the seed beads along the edge. And then once again, you do seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, into the next 15 crystal 15. Now, if you would like to be finished as this at this point, you can go to the peak here and simply add a wire guard and finish up the earring. If you wanna continue on to get a bracelet or a necklace, here's where I want you to bring your thread and needle, coming out that 11-0 there, or sorry, 15-0, through the iris duo right after it. Then you're gonna sew through the 15 
and the next two millimeter crystal. Again, if you want to, you can add your wire guard right there, having your beautiful little star, um, or you can continue on like we are going to do, to do multiple components in one piece without having to connect them after the fact. So our next action is to make this little connection point here that's gonna connect my different pieces. And to do the connection portion, we're coming out of that two millimeter crystal, and I've added to my thread and needle three more crystals with 15 OC beads before and after each. I'm gonna then go back through the crystal in a right angle weave form and come out the opposite side. That pulls this into, again, just that little right angle weave unit. Turning to the side here, go through the 15, the crystal, the 15, and then through, so you're coming out just like if you would be doing any right angle weave, exiting the far right bead of the unit. From here, we are going to start our piece over. This is also a fun way to hang down to add on to your piece if you want. So I've tried this a couple of different ways and gotten some different results on how to add. One time I tried to go ahead and add doing the exterior first, and that sits the Rivoli up really, or the Chaton up very, very high. Continuing on, I'm gonna do the method that I did to get it to sit down. But if you want it sitting really high, you can do the outer edge of the piece first and then go in and do the actual interior. From here, I'm gonna take one 15 and I'm gonna add my first iris duo. I'm adding the iris duo that's round side up through the left-hand side of the iris duo. That is eventually going to be the first iris duo that sits at the connection point there. What I'm gonna do now is go from the top hole or the outer hole to the inner hole of the iris duo, bringing the thread back the opposite direction. Now we're gonna go back and use some of our 11 OC beads and get ready to do the interior six beads, just like we've done. So I'm going through and I'm adding an 11 iris duo, 11 iris duo, and we're doing that a total of six times. As you add them, you just wanna make sure you can let them fall down to the piece if you want to, that they are sitting correctly with that interior having the half rounded side facing up because you don't want to have the case where you get them all on and then realize, oh no, the last unit was face down. Once you have all six on there with the 11 OC bead in between, you're going to sew back through the first couple beads here to make it nice and tight before we go in and put in our 15 and our 11 OC bead rotation. So I'm pulling this here and see how it's already having some give. This is the most important thing in this project is you need to kind of keep it nice and tight. So to keep it nice and tight there, I did a nice tight pull. I'm gonna go around a little bit further in the design, see how it's already pulling. But I'm gonna do a little trick. What I'm gonna do is lock it in place. So I'm going and stepping up through the Iris Duo. That's gonna lock that in place and then down through the Iris Duo and out through that same Iris Duo. Once I come out through that same Iris Duo, now it's time to start over with our piece, doing the 15, 11, 15, in through the next Iris Duo, around, around in a circle. Once you done get your center done and your chaton is nice and in place, it's time to go to that outer edge. So we're gonna go from the interior iris duo hole to the exterior iris duo hole. And I just let it lay down here so you can see exactly where we need to finish that connection point. So I'm gonna use a 15 and then I'm gonna go into the two millimeter bead that is right at that connection point. Through the 15, and then through the next iris duo. And once you're here, then it's just, again, that same rotation around. So you're going around and you're adding the 15, crystal 15, and then we're going to add our seven 15 O's around the edge and continue on to the next one. As you finish up your second little chaton here, you can see this also looks cool as two earrings hanging down that you can stack them one on top of the other, but we're gonna keep going to get our necklace piece. So again, it really works well as a component to do bracelet, show it on my wrist here, necklace, earrings. Um, it's really just a very, very pretty design. So the only thing that you have to do when you get to this point is get to the other side of the piece. 
because you want to make sure when you're connecting that you are connecting to the two millimeter crystal that sits opposite of the crystal you've already connected to. So you're going to sew through your project here, come out through that two millimeter bicone and continue on with the design. Once you're finished with your bracelet or your component piece to go on to your necklace here, what we're gonna do is attach either a clasp or a wire guard. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna attach the wire guard because then I'm going to attach it directly to my chain. And the chain that I'm gonna be using is just this nice round rollo. I like a thick chain for this because it helps to kind of balance out the front of the design. Now I could, if I wanted to, connect directly to the rollo chain. Um, I'm going to use a wire guard, connect to a wire guard. In case I change my mind, I always have kind of an out. So I'm gonna use a 15-0, coming out that last two millimeter bead, go up through the wire guard, down through the wire guard on the opposite side, sew into the chain, making sure that it goes onto your thread and needle, which is gonna then pop it into that wire guard, add another 15-0 seed bead, and go into the two millimeter, just like we've been doing when we do the connection points. So the 15 goes on. And then I'll just attach like a lobster clasp to the back of the chain with some jump rings. And because this is my connection point there, see a nice finished end, I wanna go in and reinforce that. So go back up through the 15, back up through the wire guard, make sure your thread stays in that path and goes through the chain that it stays inside the interior little um, groove of the wire guard or wire guardian. Back through the two millimeter. And then I'm going to sew into the interior of the piece. And if this is your first one here, you'll have a knot towards the back that you just go in, knot the thread off. See how I'm going into the interior of the piece, go to the back. Take your thread to an inconspicuous place, tie it off, and just burn the thread edges off along the piece if you need to. From here, I'll go to the other side, do the exact same thing, attaching to my chain on the opposite side after having done five of my units. Once you're finished with your design, you can see how nicely it lays and sparkles, and this is just an awesome project by Chris. I can't wait to see like everybody's different colors too, in case you wanna do this snowflake in the different colors, the crystal, and that icy blue. A lot of different options when it comes to this component. Thanks so much to Chris Lewis King for this amazing component and for the idea really that you can use it for anything. Ring, earrings, necklace, bracelet. It's a really fun, versatile design with a nice, simple chaton bezel. Remember, if you need any materials, go ahead and look below the video in the description. We'll put links there to get back to our website. Once again, thank you so much, Chris, and stay tuned at Potomac Beaters for more inspirational designs.